who've scrolled through TikTok recently, then you've probably noticed an uptick in ads across the platform. From the QVC style live content selling you anything from wigs to purses to various clothing items. All the great clothes, all the great deals, and you don't have to go to the mall. To the more traditional user generated content style ads, trying to get you to buy a litany of items that you don't need, like whatever the hell a shadow work journal is. You know that shadow work journal that everybody been talking about? Yeah, I finally caved in and got it. This is what she gives. I like her. I got this from the TikTok shop. Guys, I got another thing from TikTok shop. I got shadow journal. So this is the Shadow Work Journal second edition. At this point, it's impossible to deny the prevalence of TikTok and how they're leading the way in this really unsettling trend of overconsumption. Consumption, excessive consumption or use of something. And we are consuming in these little bite-sized portions, these really unnecessary items. TikTok is obviously a platform where on the surface we're going for entertainment. Whether you're watching cat videos or you're watching comedy videos or hair videos or just relatable everyday life content on TikTok, your primary goal is to be entertained. But these apps have gone beyond just wanting to entertain you. They also want to get you to buy things on the platform. TikTok's algorithm consists of a complex recommendation system that analyzes user preferences and behavior, providing them with a never ending stream of engaging videos to watch. This algorithm tends to prioritize content that is rooted in consumerism, often showcasing the latest trends and shopping hauls. Nowadays, it seems like every other TikTok in your feed is either an implicit or explicit advertisement trying to sell you a product. The short, pithy nature of these TikToks encourages is impulse buying to fulfill the hunger for instant gratification. I mean, who wouldn't be tempted to buy a trendy item that could be at your doorstep with just a few taps? Very few people are ruminating about responsible consumption or the environmental consequences when you can easily purchase the current hottest, flashiest item at your mere fingertips, which is the root of TikTok's overconsumption problem. TikTok's website touts that there are 47.6 billion views of the hashtag TikTok made me buy. TikTok has long been a purveyor of overconsumption, but with the introduction of a one-stop shopping integration within the TikTok app, where users can purchase items they see being advertised in TikToks in real time, the nonstop consumerism is worse than ever. TikTok's website states that 70% of TikTok users discover new brands and products on TikTok, and that three in four TikTok users are likely to buy something while using TikTok. 83% say that TikTok plays a role in purchase decisions. With the bevy of of creators showing off items that they've purchased after seeing them on TikTok, claiming that the items are quote, life-changing or that you quote, need these products immediately. How many of y'all have seen those Amazon items that you didn't know you needed? If you didn't know you needed it, then you didn't need it. Let's just be clear. Like if you didn't know you needed it, you didn't need it. Or my personal favorite, branding purchasing these products as quote, self-care, these products quickly go viral. And the influencers that promote these products, of course, are often getting a kickback in the form of outright sponsorships or making a commission off of each product purchased. Now there is of course nothing wrong with being paid to promote an item, but influencer culture and TikTok culture have popularized the act of doing product hauls, which means that you're buying all of these products all at once rather than just buying one item at a time. These influencers are lying to us about this product being the best product that you could ever purchase. This is gonna stop you from ever having to put gas in your car. This is gonna stop you from having to do your breathing on your own. Like, a lot of us have gotten fed up with all of these really grandiose promises of what this product is gonna do to change our lives. And a lot of us have gotten hip to the scammerization of it all, quite frankly. Obviously the primary goal in integrating shopping within a social media app is to make money off of the direct sale, but it even goes deeper beyond that. The goal of these social media companies is to get you to stay on the app for as long as humanly possible. Elon Musk told The Verge that he literally wants to make the app formerly known as Twitter a quote, 
everything app. He shared that Twitter plans to integrate job listings and game streaming and of course, live shopping into the app. And I don't think that Elon Musk is alone in this idea. I think all of these apps are employing the same strategy where they no longer want you to just go on the apps for your basic entertainment needs. They want you to go on it for your shopping needs, which is why TikTok and Facebook and Instagram, all of the major platforms have all introduced shopping within the platform because they want it to be your everything. And the more you make an app your everything, the more you form an attachment to it. Advertising is not a new concept, particularly in America. When you think of places like Times Square or really quite frankly, downtown in any major city, you are literally inundated with ads from the minute that you walk outside. When you're inside the house, when you turn on your television, you're also inundated with ads on your everyday TV shows. And these commercials are designed to be earworms. They're designed to honestly control your mind. I mean, how many times have you found yourself humming the ba da ba 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 to yourself how many of y'all know the oh zampic like how, how many of y'all know that chapter and verse and who could forget the education connection song i mean girl that was a bop we're literally inundated with advertisements and enticements to spend more money and you subconsciously whether you realize it or not are forming an attachment to these brands because they're so ubiquitous and they're so powerful on tiktok the more you see the same products pop up in your algorithm the more it increases the likelihood of you to buy it according to tiktok 92 percent of users say that they quote take action after seeing a product on the app. Now, obviously take action is ambiguous as it doesn't account for whether or not a purchase is completed, but either way, the more ads you see for things like the Shadow Work Journal or Shein or Timu or whatever fast fashion giant is popular at the time, the more that brand is seeping into your consciousness and increasing the probability of you purchasing. A couple of years ago, there was a film called The Social Dilemma where individuals who had previously worked as engineers and developers and senior level roles in social media organizations like Facebook and Instagram and so on and so forth. They all shared insight about how these social media apps are quite literally looking to control your life. Many people call this surveillance capitalism. Capitalism profiting off of the infinite tracking of everywhere everyone goes by large technology companies whose business model is to make sure that advertisers are as successful as possible. And getting ads on the internet is also nothing new. I remember back on my 2002 Windows XP gateway computer being inundated with ads to buy weight loss pills. All these pop-ups on your computer back in the day, I literally had to physically turn the computer on. That computer only exists in one room of your house and you have to be in the house to get it and open up the internet. And it took some steps to get there, right? As opposed to now that it's just like in one tab on the TikTok app, you're being inundated with ads. Now it's like we have these devices that we literally carry with us everywhere. Let's just be all the way for real. Most of us are not turning off our phones on the regular. A lot of people are checking TikTok multiple times a day and are being influenced repeatedly several times a day by these advertisements. Obviously no one's putting a gun to your head. You don't have to be on the app. But when you think of the demographic that is primarily on TikTok being Gen Z, people want to fit in, especially young people want to fit in. They want to follow the trends. They want to follow what's cool. And what is literally the coolest app that is out right now? TikTok. To be a young person and not to be on TikTok is like setting yourself up for just like being an outsider, right? So I get it. A lot of people choose to conform because that's quite frankly what we're all kind of conditioned to do. Obviously you're watching this on YouTube and chances are you probably saw an ad. But the difference between that and TikTok's situation is that they have integrated a payment system within the app. So your likelihood to purchase goes up. It's not like you're seeing an ad on the television or you're seeing an ad on a YouTube video and you have to go to that company's website to purchase something or you have to physically go to a brick and mortar store to purchase something. No, it's like you see the ad and there's instant gratification because you can purchase that right then and there, click on it and it's yours. Longer form videos with ads also allow viewers to have more time to reflect on buying a product rather than giving in to instant gratification.
quite frankly, a lot of these items that we end up purchasing are very low in quality. And I've talked about this before. They end up in landfills because the trend cycle is so short. And when I say it ends up in a landfill, a lot of people don't understand really what that means. So I'm gonna break that down for you a little bit more on the process of where that goes and why it hurts our environment. Overconsumption often leads to resource depletion, which means that natural resources are excessively extracted and depleted, including minerals, fossil fuels, fresh water, and forests in order to create these products. Did you know that the water footprint of one pound of cotton is 1,320 gallons? That means that it takes over 650 gallons of water to make one new cotton shirt. Fast fashion giant Shein is one of the biggest perpetrators of TikTok's overconsumption. They reportedly produce one million garments per day. So imagine the amount of water that that requires. And this can lead to habitat destruction, loss of biodiversity, and disruption of ecosystems. Another consequence is energy consumption. Producing and transporting goods in large quantities obviously requires a significant amount of energy, which is often sourced from fossil fuels and the increased energy demand contributes to greenhouse gas emissions and climate change, which as you all know, we're all living in the consequences of that. Overconsumption also leads to pollution. So the production, use, and disposal of products releases pollutants into the air, water, and soil, and this pollution can have severe adverse effects on our health, on wildlife, and also our ecosystems. And finally, landfills can become overflown. Overconsumption just generates a lot of waste because as I talk about a lot on this channel, people often don't keep the items that they purchase for very long because they go out of style, they're not in the zeitgeist, and then they are out of mind, out of sight and they ultimately end up being thrown out, they typically end up in landfills. Landfills have limited capacity, and when they overflow, they can contaminate the surrounding soil and water, which emits methane gas, which is a greenhouse gas that's very powerful, and it creates really hazardous conditions for environments. Ghana is a prime example of a country that's currently suffering the consequences of landfills being overflown. An environmental disaster is hitting Ghana's shores and the arrival of fast fashion is making it worse. A once thriving second-hand clothing market is now creating mountains of waste. All of these fibers are problematic, namely polyester and nylon. Those ones take forever. Leaving a damaging legacy. This is literally a waterfall of waste. Some piles of trash tower over 30 feet, taller than some buildings around here. Can't tell no more. Like, yeah, well, if I knew what I'm I'm going to be on the thing. So it's still it's my bunny, I'm going to stand up. So normally I'm going to talk with it. The dump is a breeding ground for mosquitoes that spread malaria and the water can spread cholera. And what doesn't go to landfill often ends up at beaches like this one, a mile away from Contamanto. Very degraded. Today, activists are tracking how clothing waste washes out to sea. So a lot of the clothing waste from Contamanto will basically be swept into the open gutter system, and then it'll tangle around itself. It contributes to flooding, which then causes a public health crisis. And eventually, though, it will be pushed out to sea and it will make its way to the bottom of the ocean. Many of these viral fast fashion companies have also had lead and other harmful chemicals found in their products. That sheen haul it just showed up at your doorstep may contain lead and other harmful chemicals. These toxic clothes and accessories, cancel. Why? Some of the hottest fast fashion brands have been caught slipping nasty chemicals into their clothes and accessories. And sheen is one of the worst offenders. Scientists found that some popular fast fashion brands contain toxic chemicals like lead, PFAS, and phthalates which pose a significant health risk to you and the environment. For example, lead exposure can harm the brain and nervous system, affecting the growth, development, and behavior patterns in our children. Fast fashion is cheap, trendy, and fun, but is this toxic exposure risk really worth it? Absolutely not. So if you and your kids like the dress to impress, consider spending a little more on quality clothing that contain little to no toxic chemicals. Washing new clothes also reduces some of the exposure risk. And whenever you can, try extending the life of existing clothes to repair, reuse, and swapping. And together, let's choose to support fashion that is safe for our families, workers, and the environment. Too many people, including people that I know and that I love in my personal life, they really feel like I'm in a bad mood. So let me purchase this item that is trending on TikTok. Instead of investing in long-term self-care and actually going to therapy, figuring out your shit, like setting boundaries for yourself, making the hard decisions to change your life and actually be better, which I've said before, it's not instant. It takes time. It takes years to really practice 
practice self-care the idea that the practice of doing something like buying a lipstick or buying a face mask like a skincare face mask that is is a form of self-care is so erroneous and i made a video talking all about this a lot of people are not doing the work to actually make themselves feel happy on a long-term basis people are actually buying into this instant gratification that products that they see on tiktok and not just tiktok across social media instead of working on making themselves feel better in a meaningful way that requires introspection and a lot of self-regulating dealing with your trauma or your stress or your anxiety head on people feel that buying a product is going to make them feel better and it does make you feel better for you know about a, a day or two or however long but you're still left with your feelings of inadequacy and then you just keep buying more and buying more and buying more and you'll find that it does not help you heal and these apps like tiktok are capitalizing off of that they're capitalizing off of quite frankly the strife that capitalism creates and the stress that people want to unload and a lot of these influencers who are selling you over consumption aren't happy with their own lives either like former influencer Unleash with Quiche, who recently made a really great video that I highly recommend that you all watch, where she discussed how being an influencer made her unhappy and how she would receive an insane amount of free products from brands and get paid big bucks to promote them, but she was still so, so unhappy with herself building a brand off of lies. Between cosmetic companies, clothing boutiques, small and large, I receive free clothes, products, makeup every month just more and more babe did you get my package from the front door it was an overflow abundance day and night this is what success looks like right in fact it was all really centered around lies find it by the dollar, dollar sign my life was falling apart but keep smiling in them pics People look, but they don't even see you. There's a really good mini series that's on Netflix right now that I'm watching and it's called Painkillers. And it's specifically talking about how the painkiller industry really wanted to capitalize and profit off of people's anxiety and depression and get people hooked and get people addicted. And to bring that full circle, it's the same mentality that these social media apps have. It's addiction. And in the movie, The Social Dilemma that was on Netflix, they talk specifically about how there's only two industries that refer to their customers as users and it's the illegal substance industry as well as the software industry. We see a lot of the same methods being employed in those two industries, right? Of getting people addicted, making the app their everything. By the way, buying things based on seeing an ad for it is not a bad thing. We all have done it at some point in our lives and that is not the takeaway of this video. The takeaway of this video though is to be on the app, enjoy it, maybe even buy something from it once in a while if it seems particularly enlightening and insightful and useful in your life. But ask yourself that question. I want y'all to ask yourself that question of how will this enlighten my life? Like on a long-term basis, not just a one and done basis. Like how will this make my life be better? Ask yourself, is this just instant gratification or is this something that I actually will need and use? Is this just a band-aid for a problem or is it actually a solution for a problem? Is this something that I actually would want independently of myself or is this something that I only want because it's trending right now? Because by all means, the trends will change. They will shift and you'll be left with that product and i'm not here to tell anyone what to do ask yourself those questions because we've all been there and is this actually something that i need or is this simply a trend that has been fueled by corporate greed as more people become hip to the overconsumption crisis many have embraced the concept of de-influencing which is a conscious choice to reject influencer culture rooted in overconsumption and materialism but i'd love to hear from you all in the comments down below please let me know your thoughts on this overconsumption crisis and if you really like this video definitely give it a thumbs up and if you really liked it and you want more content like this definitely hit that subscribe button and i'll talk to you all next time